Hello there, this is Jeff Erdman, EDS Inc. Shandon, and we have a, a special segment this time. We're actually just going to show you tools. Uh, we're going to show, show the shop tools. Uh, Zach has put together some of the photographs of us acquiring the tools and bringing them uh, to our shop. And, uh, and we'll just do kind of a walkthrough of, of what we have and what we're going to be doing. Uh, haven't been able to do much uh, milling this week. Uh, been way too busy uh, working late, many late hours and uh, just couldn't get the time to do a video this week. So we're going to do a real quick one of the uh, shop and and hopefully that'll satisfy some of your interest. Uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to watch this, it's fine. Uh, but we want to thank you for your uh, subscribing and, and your viewing. We appreciate that. Uh, what we're doing uh, today is really we're going to go through the shop, and, and the shop is a mess, but we're going to go through the shop and we're going to show you what we have here, what we're what our plans for uh, in the future, and, uh, uh, and you can see uh, the different tools that we've acquired. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll start off. This is my surface plate here, down here on the, the table here. It's a mess. i got all sorts of stuff out here on it. i kind of got things spread out here. I've got little projects that are that are I'm I'm working on getting done that I haven't completed. Uh, one of them is the hinge project for the Ajax mill. We've got to get that done. Uh, I've got to get uh, the uh, um, the uh, power feeds fixed again on that machine. I'm not sure what's wrong with them. Uh, I had a problem with the clutch once before, and now. I don't have any power feed again, so I'm going to have to, I think, tear into the whole thing and figure that out. So that's a job, too. And we've got a little thing that I'm uh, working on here on the lathe. Uh, haven't had much time to get to it, but uh, we're going to be making some, some um, new handles for the Ajax mill uh, so that we can uh, have more than one. Uh, for the various cranks because right now I'm hand cranking and uh, since I have a broken handle and I haven't fixed it yet what I thought I'd do is I'd make uh, a couple of different sockets and then I'll use a, a power drive to, to drive those instead of hand cranking it'll save me some time and a lot of extra work so I can use a, 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 a drill or something that has a, adjustable speeds and be able to uh, run run it that way instead of uh, hand turning everything. So that's kind of my idea here. So I've got a couple of these things that I'm going to be building. Um, uh, unfortunately, I haven't filmed anything on that. Uh, sorry about that. I came out here just one night and decided to pop it out and I threw it in here. Spent what time I could on it and then I had to leave. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll be doing that. But this is the shop now. I'd like you to take a look at the whole thing on the back behind the Ajax you can see we have all our tooling for the Ajax mill back there uh, all our cutters are on the wall we have our setups uh, our, our all our uh, tool holders are back there and um, then over to the right we'll walk over here I got right here in front of the Ajax is my, my uh, gas welding rig here uh, I have to get my tanks filled for them to be any use to me, but uh, you know I got the, my gas roller here, my Ajax mill, and I've got uh, a bunch of parts and pieces everywhere because uh, I'm halfway between everything. I come out here to rush, do something, I have to go back into the office and do paperwork again. So uh, we've got uh, on the Ajax mill we have a mill vision. Uh, I can put another. Uh, I can't. Right now I have three, yeah, I could actually put one more axis on it. I've got the two uh, cards in it. Right now it has three axes uh, set up to it. So if, if, for instance, this had a spindle on it, uh, I could actually put uh, a scale on the spindle and uh, know my feet on that as well. Uh, I don't, obviously on this mill I don't need that. So, uh, stepping over here, what a mess. I've got to rebuild this thing here. This is a, a, a brown and sharp, um, 
I'm trying to remember. It's an 824, so 8 inches by 24 inch magnet. And uh, uh, I haven't run it since I bought it. Uh, I have to go through the whole thing, or at least I want to go through the whole thing before I run it. My understanding is it was, was a working machine when I bought it. Uh, but you know, when you're doing an auction, uh, there's no guarantees of anything at all. So uh, anyway, we're going to go through this machine and make sure things are up. Uh, we'll probably put a curtain between this and my mill uh, when we're working on this so that we don't end up throwing dust all this way. Uh, what's going to happen is right above this area, straight up above us, is going to be another level. And that's where our, all our uh, smaller grinders are going to go. Uh, we're going to put all our grinders up there so that we keep all the grinding dust pretty much up there. We'll uh, have a, a, a vacuum system up there in the whole nine yards to take care of the residue and what have you from grinding. And we have down on this table here, uh, we've got a couple of grinders. This is one of them here. Um, this was an old grinder we got up. You might remember a uh, trip up to, uh, uh, what was that place, o OMAC, Washington. And we picked up these grinders, 100 bucks a piece. <laughs> So I picked up uh, three of them up there. Um, I have a real nice one over here. Uh, big, beautiful grinder. This is running now. And uh, whenever I need grinding or what have you, I plug this thing in and, and we run it right now. So uh, uh, she's a beauty. Uh, this is our Monarch here. You've seen this in a previous video. Uh, this too needs to be rebuilt. and. Uh, It'll be a long-term project. Uh, I was really hoping my nephew could come out. I've talked about him coming out for some time. And uh, uh, they, they had a lot of snow back in the Dakotas. And um, uh, he was asked to go to work uh, for snow removal for one of the tribes up there. Uh, so uh, he loves working heavy equipment. So he's up there on a piece of machinery removing snow from the roads and keeping things clear and he thinks he'll probably be busy with that for another uh, uh, four or five weeks so we probably won't see him until uh, mid-March or maybe the first of April but anyway this is going to be his pet project uh, aside from building our loft he's going to be working on this lathe and, and doing repairs and stuff on that so uh, we'll be getting into that this go on over here uh, into the wood shop area. Got everything leaned up against it, but you can see my Yates American uh, bandsaw. Uh, this is dates back to the 1940s, I believe. Uh, do you remember what it was on the what the date on this was when we looked it up? Okay, uh, uh, he has some pictures with the dates and that sort of thing on the video. So uh, you'll be able to see what, how old this is. I can't remember. They're all old machines, older than I am. But uh, we use this for resawing, and uh, we don't do that a whole lot. But when we need veneers for our style and rail doors, then we'll set up and we'll uh, run uh, and and. We might have some stock that's two inches or whatever, and we'll take them, we'll uh, peel that stock so that we have identical styles and rails. And we like our veneer to be about a quarter inch thick. Uh, a lot of manufacturers send out, you know, they're only a sixteenth or whatever. But we like our thicker veneer, so that's why we resaw it ourselves. So, uh, anyway, so we've got that. Okay, so we're over at our Oliver Lathe here, and uh, You've seen this before. Um, we, we've used this before we got the Hindi and the Monarch. We used this pretty much for our metal cutting lathe. And you saw me make a, this tool post holder for it. And uh, you've seen me use it to, to make various parts, cut off parts, what have you. And uh, nice old machine, heavy duty, uh, really strong. And uh, uh, this is uh, one of the first acquisitions I got, is uh, this Hindi lathe right here. 
So, uh, I'm not Hindi, I apologize. This is an Oliver lathe, and uh, this dates back before my time as well. I, uh, again, on the pictures it shows what dates uh, these were originally made, a little bit of history about them, so uh, you'll be able to follow that. And then over here, we've got, uh, I got junk on everything out here. Nobody's working today, so. Uh, but this is my, uh, this is the only tool that I bought brand spanking new. This is a, a Powermatic uh, uh, planer and uh, I had a job that came up that I needed a 24 inch planer. My 12 inch here wouldn't do anymore and uh, so I uh, started looking to see if I could find something in an auction real quick and I uh, couldn't find anything so I just bought this brand spanking new. I paid probably more for this than I did altogether uh, the rest of the tools in this shop uh, because uh, th this this was an expensive tool buying it brand new. So all the others I paid really pennies on the dollars in comparison. Over here to this side, this is my scroll saw. Uh, this is another Oliver machine, and. Uh, uh, I think I picked this up for, I think it was only like 400 bucks or something like that. And uh, it's been really handy. I've really enjoyed having it. Uh, it's not something that you use every day anymore, but uh, it has a lot of capabilities. It's really interesting. You can put uh, just about any blade you want on here. I can cut metal, I can cut glass, I can cut ceramic, uh, and do all the different uh, uh, you know, the contours and whatever with this. So it's really kind of handy to have. I use it a lot for making jigs. So uh, handy little uh, uh, saw to have in your shop. It's big, it takes up quite a footprint, and I've tried to shove it back here to where it doesn't uh, take up too much room. Then over here we have a, a Whitney planer, not planer, a Whitney shaper. Uh, this is a, a wood shaper. Uh, we made this fence for it. I believe I had that on one of my videos when we were making this fence uh, for this. And this is what we uh, actually uh, mill all our style rails with to, to uh, uh, put the, uh, so we can put our glass and panels into doors and what have you. So all the sticking's done on this machine right here. Uh, it's an ancient old machine. We've got a power feed here we've set up a uh, um, uh, the power feed has a, a, a control speed control so we can slow this down to as slow as we want and uh, uh, so that works out really sweet for running running our stock through this machine so you almost need one of those if you're going to be running a shaper uh, dangerous tool I so I like to see this stuff over the top of it uh, okay so then, this is a, a new acquisition here. We just picked this up this week. This is a uh, Ellis a bandsaw. And uh, it's really handy for cutting lineal stock. So I have a, a really nice bandsaw in there, a metal cutting bandsaw that we use uh, extensively for uh, running uh, parts and pieces through. You've seen it on some of my videos. But for lineal stock, uh, you, you don't have enough throat distance to cut it. So we needed something that we could do lineal with. We have a chop saw for lineal, but uh, uh, that takes a lot of time to use. You have to haul it all the way in there, adjust it onto the, the bench and what have you. But I can take this and I can roll it wherever I want to. Uh, if I, because it's, it's on rollers here, so we're able to uh, move it. And I can roll it wherever I want to, and I can cut material. So it's like I've got all that steel that we're gonna use for the loft. But I can take this back there and uh, set up my generator, it runs off of 110, and this thing will do all my cutting for me. I can cut all the pieces, instead of hauling all those long 30 foot pieces up here, trying to get them into the shop, I can cut them right down there into, uh, sections that we can actually uh, build with. So this is going to be really handy. 
<coughs> that's an Ellis uh, band saw. And then over here is our Oliver table saw. Now this is a newer saw in comparison to my other Oliver equipment because this was made in 1974 if I remember correctly. I think the, the scroll saw was a 1960s model. Um, but again, that should be on all the pictures. So, uh, and, and I should have histories for all this stuff too. I'm not sure if you put the histories on. Did you do that? Not all, okay. But you can go to Vintage Machine and see the histories of these machines. And then over here, this is uh, this big machine along the wall is our door machine. This is what, where we uh, 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 pre-machine doors. So you can, uh, this machine routes the hinges in, it bores the lock, bevels it, uh, it uh, routes out this, the latch plates and that sort of thing on, on the, uh, the uh, doors. So that helps us to be able to uh, machine our doors efficiently. So we don't use it much because most of our doors we bring in uh, pre-machined. Uh, now, occasionally we have we build doors here. When we build the doors, then we need to run it through the machine. So let's go on into the metal shop, and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so this is uh, our DeWalt uh, radial arm saw, and this is primarily for cutting metal. So uh, this can do lineal lengths as well, but uh, and, and it works quite effectively. It's got a big metal blade on it, and uh, uh, we can use that, but trying to get really long lengths in here, and I'm talking about lengths, I've got maybe uh, uh, 30 feet across the shop. So trying to get a 30 foot piece of metal in here and then get uh, 10 feet cut off of it is kind of a pain. So uh, that's why I got the bandsaw because it's more portable, I can take it where I need to and cut it off. This is more. Uh, stable. We use this a lot for cutting the, the metal door jams, the hollow metal door jams. We could cut miters on the hollow metal door frames with this and what have you. And then we have a standard cutoff saw. So uh, this too we can cut lineal material on. But same problem, having to get it in here, get it into the shop. And you can see we don't have a whole lot of room between here and the shelving on the other side. Uh, if you want to pan over there and show that the distance that we have between here and there. So, okay, so this is a, a Dake press I have here. Uh, this, we primarily, we primarily uh, use this for punch and dimpling our door frames. And then over here, on this side is our welding rack. This is where we uh, weld up our frames and what have you, or any welding work that we do. Over here is a Dake press. Uh, he's got again all sorts of stuff piled against it. But this is where we. Uh, this is a, a pneumatic hydraulic press, 25 tons, I think it is. And uh, what it's designed for is for punching out the hinge placements or the strike placements on hollow metal frames. So that's primarily what that is for. It's uh, not an everyday press. So then over here we've got. Uh, our Buffalo drill press uh, that, uh, uh, that we have here. We got uh, a couple of different Miller welders, the smaller ones. And uh, then we have this big Lincoln welder here. We have a tool and cutter grinder over there, a sander back in that corner over there. And uh, then this is a newer Everlast welder that we have. It works really great. I enjoy it. And then, of course, we have the uh, uh, Dual Bandsaw, which is really a fantastic saw. We use this a lot, uh, constantly uh, within the shop for its use. So that's pretty much a tour of our shop, and hope you enjoyed this. And, and we look forward to more videos to come as we actually do some work in here. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you'd like. And uh, this is ZDS Inc. Shandon, out. Thank you.